Welcome to the Morning Mist 99 Above and Beyond Schizophrenia. It's where we're coming from, it's where we are, it's where we're going. Above and beyond. We're not going to stop. We're not going to settle. We are going to go forward. We're going to rise above and we're going to go forward, man. So we're back talking about this intrusive thoughts part two. I thought I made part two, but then I guess I deleted the video. So I'm remaking part two. I'm redoing part two. So we're going to look at intrusive thoughts again. And some of the stuff we're going to touch on, uh, we already kind of touched on it before, but we're going to just go into it a little more in depth and also look more in depth about some of the stuff that I struggled with. Now, intrusive intrusive thoughts are tend to be more uh, related to OCD like we talked about, but the thing about it is, now if you have schizophrenia and don't have maybe intrusive, well, I shouldn't say you don't have intrusive thoughts because intrusive thoughts are more than the kind of OCD, uh, you know, like uh, part of it. Uh, because to me, intrusive thoughts is like voices and and uh, uh, negative thoughts and all these things that maybe you don't want. You know, the the, the yelling and the and the and the and the torment because all that stuff is is mental, and so that's all intrusive in nature. So I do think and. One of the thing I, I realize is that when it comes to mental illness uh, in general, so whether it's something like intrusive thoughts, or maybe if you're if you have schizophrenia, you don't have maybe something like as 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 like repetitive, uh, 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 un, uncontrollable thoughts. Uh, but if you have symptoms like uh, uh, auditory hallucinations or uh, 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 olfactory or whatever gustatory whatever it is, whatever it is voices yelling at you all kinds of stuff seeing stuff at the end of the day the nature of these things are the same you understand the nature of it is to torment the nature of those things is to break you down mentally emotionally spiritually physically just run you into the ground Right, so if the nature of them are, are are the same, how you deal with them is pretty much similar, right? It's pretty much the same thing because, like I've said, the there are laws that govern the operation of those things, and so if there's a law that govern them, there's also a law that governs how your response to them can actually bring you out of it. Or it can trap you in it more. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Right? There are rules to the game. And if you don't know that, you're going to be in a pickle and you're going to suffer uh, more than you need to. That's where I suffered for so many years because I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't really committed to the things that I knew. And I let all those fell by the wayside because I wanted an easy way out. There's no easy way out. But there is a way out, right? So we're going to look at this stuff. Let's go. Here, and I could have just come to this page early on, actually, for the first video, because they have pretty much a lot of the same stuff. But like I said, we're going to kind of retouch on some of those. Uh, but I'm going to move through it pretty quickly, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Seeing as we already gone through most of that. So this just talks about what intrusive thoughts is, uh, or are, and... Uh, we already went through some of the stuff. It talks about it being linked to OCD and so forth. Um, in general, many, you know, Wikipedia obviously is a lot of, it's not like really authenticated, I guess. There's, you know, um, I guess it's got this, it has its issues, but you'll find us a lot of this information is corroborated in uh, other places. Uh, I looked at this stuff and even the article went over last time. It's pretty much the same stuff here. Uh, so, um, as well as this thing that I really want to focus on, I, I, I saw uh, those things in other articles as well. So, so I think uh, this it pretty seems pretty authentic to me, although 
Um, actually, I'll get on that one. So once I get there. So, uh, yeah, so this goes, uh, talks about some of the stuff that we talked about. Uh, well, intrusive thoughts. Talks about it being linked to OCD again. And oh yeah, so the possibility that patients suffering from intrusive thoughts will ever act on these thoughts is low. Patients who are experiencing intense guilt, anxiety, shame, and are upset over these thoughts are very different from those who actually act on them. So the history of violent crime is dominated by those who feel no guilt or remorse. And most times you people with intrusive thoughts of this nature, they are, you're, you're petrified of them. You're ashamed. You're in hiding. Uh, you're isolating. You're not, they're not tantalizing. They're not things you want to, you know, they're not like ice cream and lollipops, you know, they're almost like eating chewing and razor blades or something like that. They're, they, they're hurt. They hurt. They're, it's like a. It's like you know, with physical pain, you can console a physical pain. You know, you bandage it up. You got a wound or something. You bandage it up. You, you know, you everything just goes towards it, and you you have some ointments and whatnot. You put it there, and it's and you, you kind of feel better. It's something you could do about it. Other people can come and oh look at that. You know, they can console you, and they you know they can see it. It's it's so evident, right? And you can get treated and taken care of. But when it comes to this mental stuff, it's you can't console it like that. It, even though you're wounded, even though you're wounded inside, there is no consoling. There's no bandage you can put on that. It's just you're left to suffer. You're left to deal with it. And this is what this stuff is. It's not something that people tend to, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't find... Uh, your, your your thumb being busted out under a, a hammer, tantalizing. Neither will a person suffering from this stuff uh, uh, find it tantalizing. It's it's destructive. It's painful. So the very act that someone is torment, the very fact that someone is tormented by intrusive thoughts and has never acted on them before is a, is an excellent predictor that they will not act upon the thoughts. Patients who are not troubled or shamed by their thoughts do not find them distasteful or have actually taken action. Might need to have more serious con might need to have more more serious conditions such as a psychosis or uh, or potentially criminal behaviors ruled out. Okay, that was makes sense to me at first. Okay, so they're saying if you have uh, you you find those things tasteful and. You know, you're unashamed of it, then you, you you might be, you know, on the on the other side of stuff. So, and that's here's the thing: I had schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is labeled a psychosis, and yet I had many of these intrusive thoughts that they're talking about. Yet, you know, <laughs> I wasn't finding them tantalizing. I wasn't dreaming about them. I was I was horrified, petrified by them. You know, so. According to Lee Bear, so that's not just because you might be experiencing some form of psychosis as well uh, as having uh, experiencing intrusive thoughts. It doesn't mean that you're going to act on them either, right? Is a different levels to that, right? And I think you got to be somebody else who, who somebody who has certain other issues where you have to find these things uh, pleasurable because they are they are harmful. Um, so a patient uh, should be concerned that intrusive thoughts are dangerous if the person does not feel upset by the thoughts or rather finds them pleasurable, has ever acted on violent sexual thoughts or urges, hears voices or sees things that others do not see or feels uncontrollable, irresistible anger. And sometimes, yeah, that I felt this, this pull, you know, and it's just, it, it, it's, it's hard, um, but hearing voices, I never act out violently, even though I felt like it sometimes. Because when you have these intrusive thoughts, and then with psychosis, you hear the thought broadcasting coming at you and, and, and people responding to that and kind of laughing at you with the suffering, the pain you're going through, it tell, tends to want to 
you know, you 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 you're asking for compassion and 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 just help, and then to hear people laughing at you, and you believe in this, right? You believe that they're really laughing at you, and then it, so it makes you want to respond. In in and that's where I think the psychosis part comes in when they say you might need to have these other issues ruled out, or where it might be more uh, dangerous, because I, that's a different uh, uh, layer to the problem, another layer to the problem, and it can complicate things. But like I said. I never acted out on any of this stuff. I had I had all these, you know, uh, I mean, not violent sexual thoughts or anything like that, but I've had uh, intrusive thoughts that are of a sexual nature, right? But I never acted on any of them. In fact, they were kind of embarrassing, <laughs> you know? But uh, so just because you're experiencing psychosis, again, it doesn't mean that you are an... an uh, are going to lean towards that either, you know, so towards any of this stuff. So, um, so intrusive thoughts, maybe, uh, violent involve violent obsessions about hurting others or themselves. They can be related uh, to primarily obsessional obsessive compulsive disorder. These thoughts can include harming a child, jumping from a bridge, a mountain, or top of a tall building, urges to jump in front of a train or automobile and urges to push on another in front of a train or automobile. I mean, I, to be honest, I've had those things even before I had diagnosed schizophrenia. You know, all those thoughts come to your head. <laughs> it's just, that's kind of messed up. But I think everybody kind of, kind of passes through your mind, but you're not going to do it. But some people do it. That's the thing. I saw a video online a little while ago and somebody pushed this lady in front of a train. And it's just like, I don't know if that's the same thing. Like one of those, those uh, uh those little impulses impulses that was really strong or if they actually just did that because of some form of hatred right so that could be you know a thing too but but you know i've had those thoughts just kind of pass through my mind when i was a kid right growing up but uh, like teenager at some point but it's not something that i really took serious or anything it's just a thought um and then it just passed and just kind of went in my way right didn't dwell on it or whatnot so urges to push on, okay, Ratman survey on healthy college students found that virtually all of them had intrusive thoughts from time to time, including causing harm to other people, imagining or wishing harm upon someone else or someone close to oneself, impulses to violently attack, hit, harm, or kill a person, small child, or animal, impulses to shout at or abuse someone or attack and violently punish someone or say something rude inappropriate nasty or violent to someone what does this tell you is that as human beings we're kind of messed up right now i'm like see, just the fact that we have these things this is healthy college students found that virtually all of them even though we don't act on them it shows that there's something at our core that isn't right. There's something about us as humans that's just that's not right. Because you think of all this stuff that we, uh, that these things come into our minds. It's just like, why? You know what I mean? So it, it really makes you just really consider your own nature, uh, uh, you know, carefully. So these thoughts are part of being a human and need not ruin the quality of life. I mean, yeah, it's it's a, it's a human thing, exactly, right? It's a very human thing, but it just, again, it just makes you wonder. Like, a lot of times people say, oh, I'm a good person, I'm a good this and that. Well, what exactly is good? And by what metrics are you judging yourself? Because if this is the thoughts we're having, what the heck is so good about any of this, right? So <laughs> it's just really, it's really interesting. Treatment is available when the thoughts are associated with OCD and become persistent, severe, or distressing. Uh, stressing a variant of aggressive intrusive thoughts, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> or the call of the void sufferers of generally described conditions as manifesting in certain con situations, normally as a wish or brief desire to jump from a high location. Yeah, sometimes that happens. So then it goes into sexual thoughts and yeah i've had i've had, I've had some of those uh which is you know so a person experiencing these sexual thoughts might feel shame embarrassment guilt distress torment fear 
of acting on the thought of perceived impulses. I've, I've listened to a video of uh, somebody who, I think, no, it was a video I watched and somebody talked about, in the comment, they posted that they, uh, it was a video on OCD and uh, they talked about having sexual intrusive thoughts towards uh, a family member. And they pretty much have not seen that family member in a long time, you know, because they don't want these thoughts, but it makes them feel filled with such shame that they just avoid them, right? Avoid that person. And here's the thing, though. If thought broadcasting is not even a part of this person's uh, symptoms, why run? Why hide? Because the other person doesn't know what you're thinking, right? What's coming to your head. But this, but that's how powerful this can be is that even though that person may not, you may not, you don't think they're in your head or reading your thoughts, it still makes you want to hide. It still makes you not want to be around. And that's how uncomfortable it makes you feel. Right? Now imagine that thought broadcasting was a part of that. Right, and then that person who you have, that family member or something that you're having the thoughts about, responds to that, looks at you weird. <laughs> you know, it makes you it makes you want to jump off a bridge <laughs> or something like that. Right, that's how bad this stuff can be. Right, it really tears you down. It has a potential to do that. Right, it's just uh, it's it, it's really powerful stuff. You know, and that's. That's one of the the thing about it is a lot of times we want to isolate ourselves. We want to hide and run, and and uh, that's the one of the worst things you could do, right? One of the one of the, the other worst thing is try to is try to try, try to fight them, trying to fight them, trying to struggle against them in a in a non productive way. There is a right way to struggle. There's a wrong way to struggle, right? Just like how there's a right direction to run and a wrong direction to run if you're trying to escape something, right? So it's knowing how to struggle against it, right? But the thing about it is it makes you want to just do handle it in the wrong way, in the way that's not uh, uh, going to help you, Right? Just by its nature and how we react to it, because a lot of times our reaction it's just it's just reacting without intention, reacting without a plan, reacting just on instinct, right? And that's usually gonna back us in a corner and keeps us in the in 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 a in, a, in the whole mess of things, right? So hiding. Avoiding a person, that's the last thing we want to do. We want to go towards that person. You understand? We want to, we want, we want to find like that person who, who put that comment in that video I was watching, the example I gave earlier. What they should have done was just call up that family member. Hey, let's get together. You understand? Put yourself in the fire. Right? Because then you're there with intention. You know what the problem is. And if you know what the problem is, you can now just have a plan of attack. You know, have a plan of action, what you're going to do, how to get beyond it, right? So you kind of study up, know what your weapons are, know what your weaknesses are, what's going to come at you and how to handle those, I call those giants, the anxieties and the all this, you know, the, the feelings that makes you want to run and makes you want to hide, the shame, the guilt, all the stuff. These are giants, I call them. And then you, but we got to slay them. We got to overcome them. So if we know these things are coming, we can plan how we're going to deal with them. The embarrassment, whatever, you know. And if we know that, we okay, we got to confront this, and we move towards it. And when you do that. It's like I liken it to being in a fire, stepping into the fire and burning, man. Because when time you're there, your 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 body's getting hot, you're sweating, you're <laughs> you feel like running, but you stay, and it hurts. But you stay, and if you stay there long enough, 
not just one day, but you know, you do it for whatever it is, how many times, uh, however long, then the next day, next time you do it again, you do it again, you'll burn. But what you, if you do it long enough, you realize it's not you that's burning. It's all the shame that you feel. It's the guilt. It's the torment. It's the fear. It's the anxiety. It's all that that's covered you. That mud. That mari. That 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 just you know all that heavy burdens that you've been carrying. That's been holding you down. That's what burning off. And beneath that is you, the person who wants to live, who wants to. You know, have good times with that family member and, 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 and just not being isolation, but going out there living your life freely. Not being uh, hiding and running and walking with your head down because you can't look anybody in the eyes because you're afraid what might come out of your mind. Right? So you got to go towards a problem. That's how we deal with this. But most of the times you want to run from the fire. We don't want you to be uncomfortable. You need to be uncomfortable. You better be uncomfortable. You, you, you have to because there's no growth that's found in comfort. Nothing is found there. You'll die in comfort. You know what I mean? But this stuff, like I, sa I said, this stuff, can it can be transformative. You can find yourself through this stuff if we have the courage, the faith, to just per persevere through it. Religious uh, thoughts. This is where I would want to get to because this is what I struggle with a lot. Right? This is what the, the main feature of, of the intrusive thoughts, aside from the uh, schizophrenic uh, features, blasphemous thoughts are a common uh, component of OCD documented throughout history. Notable religious figures such as Martin Luther and Ignatius of Loyola were known to be tormented by intrusive, blasphemous, or religious thoughts and urges. Martin Luther urged, uh, had urges to curse God and Jesus and was obsessed with images of the devils behind. St. Ignatius numer had numerous obsessions, including the fear of stepping on pieces of straw coming from a cross, fearing that it showed disrespect to Christ. A study of 50 patients with primary diagnosis of obsessive compulsive disorder found that 40% had religious and blasphemous thoughts and doubts a higher but not statistically significant different number than the 38% who had the obsessional thoughts related to dirt and contamination more commonly associated with OCD. One study suggests that the content of intrusive thoughts may vary depending on culture and that blasphemous thoughts may be more common in men than in women. According to Fred Penzel, a New York psychologist, some common religious obsessions and intrusive thoughts are sexual thoughts about God, saints, and religious figures, bad thoughts or images during a prayer or meditation, thoughts of being possessed, fears of, of sinning or breaking a religious law or performing a ritual incorrectly, repetitive and intrusive blasphemous thoughts, urges or impulses to say blasphemous words or commit blasphemous acts during religious services. Suffering can be great. Suffering can be greater in treatment. Complicated when intrusive thoughts involve religious implications. Very true. Patients may believe the thoughts are inspired by Satan, and may fear punishment from God or have magnified shame because they perceive themselves as sinful. Symptoms can be more distressing for sufferers with strong religious convictions or beliefs. Bear believes that blasphemous thoughts are more common in Catholics and Evangelical Protestants. Than in other religions, whereas Jews or Muslims lent, uh, tend to have obsessions related more to complying with the laws and rituals of their faith, perform the rituals perfectly. He hypothesizes that this is because what is considered inappropriate varies among cultures and religions, and intrusive thoughts torment their sufferers with whatever is considered most inappropriate in the surrounding culture. And that's very, that's the nature of it, man. It's just, uh, you know. About this Martin Luther, this is, I, they look back, and I guess this is, uh, I don't know how how valid this is. Um, when you're looking back and diagnosing people in the past of, you know, when you never really 
you know, listen to them yourselves or, 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 you know, hear it from their own mouth. So I don't know how they got some of the stuff, but it's pretty, it seems like it's uh, something that was documented at, at least because I've seen this at different places. So it's not just on Wikipedia. Um, so I, I, it's very interesting. Um, but at the same time, I don't know the validity of, that, of all that. But um, one thing I know you notice is that these here, what's common about all this is that it's all fear-based, right? Fear, and I had a, a video called Schizophrenia and the Power of Fear because schizophrenia is a, a largely fear-based, right? Intrusive thoughts, fear-based. A lot of it's fear-based because fear is a gateway into your mind and it allows you to uh, become imprisoned by the thing you fear, right? It's 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 very uh, interesting how that works because the, the the thing that you fear the most and you want to run from and you despise it, the more it comes after you, right? So therefore, the the antidote to this is to not fear, right? It's just let go. Right, because when you fear something, believe it or not, the more you're holding on to it, right? Uh, things of that nature. The more you're gonna hold on to it, the more it's gonna come after you. The more your mind is gonna uh, be open to receive it, right? So then you need something, courage. You need faith. You need all these other positive uh, things to combat that, right? To alleviate the fear and to stand in the presence of the thing you fear and not allow it to. Uh, move you and get that emotional response because that in itself is going to also help trap you so and then uh, what it says that it, it's it's intrusive intrusive thoughts torment their sufferers with whatever is considered most inappropriate in the surrounding culture exactly right it's whatever it is so it's 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 whatever it is in your uh, uh your culture your religion, your your family, whatever it is, you're in your in your heart, your mind that you hold dear and that you hold sacred or whatever it is, off off limit stuff. That's what it comes for. And it's interesting that we use the word torment here because when you look at the uh, Satan is a tormentor, right? That's what the Bible uh, talks about demons, right? Devils. That just means tormentor. You know what I mean? So it's it's interesting. And the nature of mental illness is torment. It's the very definition of the word. Right? But I don't want to get into that. But re regardless of what you believe, whether you believe in uh, the God or, or demons or or uh, whatever the heck, whether you're Jewish, you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Catholic, or whatever, all the same, you know, um, whatever religion it is, it, it doesn't matter, right? Or if you're non-religious, it doesn't matter because the problems were the same. You, you're still, the, 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 the nature of it is the same, right? And you have to deal with it in a similar manner. You have to confront it. You have to overcome it. You can't run from it. You can't, uh, when you try to struggle against it, you try to, argue against it you try to plead with it all that stuff just gets you more uh, imprisoned more beaten down more affected so don't run from intrusive thoughts whatever the nature of it whatever uh, it may be go towards a problem go with intention go with understanding you know there's a lot of times people don't we, we know a lot of stuff you know, people can know a lot more about schizophrenia than I do. People, I've seen doctors and psychologists and uh, nurses and all these highly educated people, decorated. I'm not that, you know, I'm just, <laughs> just me as a regular dude. I don't, I'm not up there. But how is it? That you, they, they, they uh, uh, study all this, have all this knowledge about the, the, the all the terminology of schizophrenia and all his, all his insights into the realm of schizophrenia in the in, in, in the book as part of it. But when it comes to 
of re recovering from it, they struggle. They can't do it. They, they, you know, I've seen some people talking about uh, uh, they're going to stop their stopping their pills and they're trying to get off it, but because they go, they stop taking it and things become so rough and stuff and they end up losing themselves. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like you that your knowledge should be able to help you here, right? But it's because people don't have the understanding to go with the knowledge why they end up uh, just continue to suffer for it. You stop taking your meds. Well, yeah, you should understand what's coming and you should know how to stand against it, but they just get swept away. They can't bear it. So uh, having understanding is key. Having knowledge is not enough. You need understanding. And I, but with, just with intrusive thoughts alone, I've seen people, uh, uh, I've read people who face those things in an intentional manner and uh, got beyond it. Because, it, you know, it's different when you do that versus when you try to run from it or, or you're just, you know, you, if you step into it with any uncertainty, you know, you're, you're going to be in a bit, bit of a trouble. Right, and that's why a lot of uh, some of these people do these these uh, people I was talking about is that they they try to approach things with a with a let's see attitude. You're not gonna get anything with a let's see attitude. Nothing's gonna get done like that. You've got to know what the heck you're doing. When you're stepping out there, believe me, the ground will disappear, and you got to be believe that the ground is there, <laughs> that you're not gonna fall. Or else you will come crashing down. It's almost like, you ever seen those cartoons? When a guy is running off, uh, uh, running, running, running. And then he runs off a cliff and he keeps running, 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 running. It's like those bug bunny uh, type of stuff. And he keeps running. And then and then he, he doesn't fall until he stops. And he realizes that there's no ground underneath his, far, on his feet. He looked down and he's like, and then that's when he falls. Because the mind is a dangerous, is a very tricky place, right? And that's what happens when you step out uh, from schizophrenia because you're walking and you're good when you're on the medication. But then when you stop it and you're walking, 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 and suddenly the ground ain't there anymore. And you look and you realize there's nothing there. What are you going to do? That's where a lot of people get caught. That's where all these people get caught. Because they go with a, a let's see attitude and let's see what, you, what you're going to do when the ground ain't there. They come crashing down. Remember when, uh, for you uh, who read the Bible, when Peter was walking on water? And what happened? He was walking, but then the wind started to come the, and, and, and the waves are coming. And what happened? He, he, he started to doubt. He started to realize, man, I'm standing in water. This ain't possible. And then he started to sink <laughs> because it came into his mind what he's doing. And is he, I'm not supposed to be doing this. You know, so it's kind of like the same thing when you're, when you're walking and what the solid substance under your feet ain't there, what are you going to do? You can't go in there with the let's see attitude. You got to go in there with the I know attitude. And you got, you got, to, you got to know what you're talking about too. You can't just say it. You've got to know. Because when these giants come for you, if you're not ready, if you're not armed, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you don't got what you, what you say you got, then you're going to be in for some trouble. Okay, it looks like I made this video a lot longer than I actually intended it to be. I was hoping to get like 15 minutes, but uh, yeah, I talked too much. Anyway, um, hopefully you got something from it. Until next time. Later.